Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna make a football shirt. Now I made one for myself. It's different than what I'm going to do today, but I made this for myself and I wore it to work yesterday. And a friend saw it and she wanted to buy one. Now in my template, I actually sliced the word Trojans out of some of the rhinestones, but the one I do today will be different. The one that I do today, it'll have a football and the word Trojans under it. And then I'll put the football template on my Etsy shop. That way, if you want a football shirt and you want to customize it with your own name, you can. So these rhinestones are something that I got from the baby's booty. And I thought this color was beautiful for a football. The name of the color is coffee. And let me show them to you a little bit more closely. Don't you think those are the perfect color for a football? So for today's video, I'm going to use this black shirt. I'm going to use some white HTV, and this is Angie Easy HTV by Hippo. I did receive this for free to try out. I tried it out on my last video or the one before that, and I really did love it. So I'm going to use it on this shirt. Then for the gold part, I have a different brand of HTV. I think this is called Firefly. I bought it in a huge bundle. You get a little bit of a lot of different colors, and I'll put a link to this in the video description as well. I'll put a link to a lot of these things in the video description. Then I'll use my rhinestone template. I'll brush the stones in with this little brush. If I need to move any around, I have this rhinestone picker tool. Then once I get the rhinestones in, I'll use some transfer tape to pick up my stones and move them to the shirt. Then I'll press them on with my heat press. Now I've already cleaned my shirt and I just used a lint roller for that. Now just to make sure all these colors would look good together, I did a small little color template. Just kind of an idea if you're not sure how it'll come out, find some fabric, the color of whatever you're using. Those are the two colors of HTV and the rhinestones I'm using and I thought it looked really good together. So we're going with that. It's also a way you can show your customer what it'll look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the computer, show you the design, and then I'll meet you right back here. Now, I actually did my rhinestone template in Silhouette Business Edition. I have to use that edition because I don't use a silhouette cut. And since the Business Edition is the only version that lets you save your files as SVGs, that's the one that I use. So let's go ahead and bring my template into Cricut. I'll say new project, upload. Now here's the prior shirt that I did, the one that had Trojans cut out of the rhinestones. And unfortunately, when I made that template, I didn't save a copy of the football before I destroyed it. So I ended up spending quite a bit of time today redoing that football. All right, so I'll say upload images. I can either browse for it and find the file or I see it on my desktop. I'll just drag it over. Now it says it's a large image, but that was real time. I did not speed it up. It really didn't take very long. Now notice that in my file name, I have the dimensions of my design. And that'll be important because most of the time when I bring a design into Cricut, they don't come in at the right size. If you have the size of your file in your dimensions, you're always going to know what size it should be. And especially with rhinestone templates, that is extremely important because those holes have to be a certain size. Okay, so I'll say upload. Again, this is real time. I didn't speed it up and it's already there. So I'll click on this image and I'll say add to canvas. And look at that, it came in at the right size. That is unbelievable. That almost never happens. So if you buy this off of Etsy, maybe it'll come in the right size, maybe it won't. Just make sure. Well, let me show you how you would resize it. I'll go ahead and lock the proportions. Let's pretend like it came in at 13.115 by 7.871. All I would do is I'd go up here, with the dimensions locked and in the width, I'd put 9.736 and the width should change and it did. 
5.843, and that's correct. Okay, so I'm going to move that down just a little bit, and the first thing I want to do is go ahead and ungroup this. And then I've select the laces and the outside, and I want to turn that white. I'm going to use white HTV for that, so I'm just doing that to kind of keep it straight. Now, it doesn't really matter what color these holes are, but just for the sake of being what my design is, I'll turn those brown. Then the last thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and personalize this with the word Trojans. So in all caps, I'm typing Trojans. And I'll click off of it, back on it. And then let's go ahead and make that about eight and a half inches wide. Now before I get too far, I probably should actually find the font that I want. And the font that I want is Varsity. So I clicked on fonts. Now I could just search now, but I want to show you if you click on system, then you're only going to see the fonts that are on your computer and they're free. I don't have Cricut access. So when I'm just looking for a font, I click on that and I look through them. In this case, I know I want varsity. So I'll go ahead and search for that. And there it is. So I'll click on it. And I just love this font for sports type things. All right, let's go ahead and make that back to 8.5. And I think the letters are a little too short. I'm going to go ahead and unlock that. Let's try two and a half. And that might be just a little bit too tall. I'll just drag it till I like it. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now the last thing I notice about these letters is I don't really love the spacing. Look how close those are, yet this is farther away. And this J just looks too far away from everything, so I'll say ungroup. And I'll move this in. I'm going to click on it. And then I just use my right arrow key or my left arrow key to move those over. Okay, let's go one more. And then I'm just going to click on each of these letters and move them where I think they look good. Okay, I'm going to move that back to the left just a little bit. And that looks good. So I'll select all those. And I'm actually going to say attach so that they cut like that. Now my word Trojans is going to be gold. So let's go ahead and turn that kind of a yellowy gold. Now, if I was using white for this, then I would take my laces and my outside, I would add Trojans to it, and then I would line those up. But I'm cutting in three different colors, so I don't really need to do that. Now, the last thing I need to consider is with HTV, you have to mirror that. At least most HTVs you do if you're not using a mask. And I like to go ahead and mirror mine in the design. That way, I don't have to worry about forgetting. So I've selected Trojans, and I'll say Flip Horizontal. And then I'm going to select right over here. That's the white part of the football. I'll say Flip Horizontal. Now, it looks off, but that's just because it's horizontal and the stones are not. So I'm going to go ahead and say Make It. Now, with the HTVs that I'm using, I just use this everyday iron on setting right here, default pressure, and I'm ready to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and then I'll meet you back over at the table. Okay, so as I did this, I realized that I didn't say I'd be using a weeding tool and then I will probably also use a Teflon sheet. So it's a couple more supplies that you might need. So with HTV, typically it's super easy to weed. Now with this varsity font, you have to be really careful when you weed it. I almost ruined that O, but it worked out okay. But if you use this font, just be super careful. There's so many little cuts and pieces in there that you have to kind of think about it. And that's something I forget to do once in a while.
And so this is the first time I've cut this template. For that reason, I've used glitter cardstock. I want to make sure it works well, and then if it does, I'll go ahead and cut it out of the flock. Everything works so much more smoothly with the flock as far as brushing your rhinestones in. But for the first cuts, I like to use glitter cardstock. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go in circular motions. And look how pretty those are. I love this color. Okay, so even though there's quite a few holes for me to fill in, I'll spend a few minutes doing that. Then we'll pick this up and get it on the shirt. Now I'm going to look for extra rhinestones and rhinestones that are flipped upside down and get those off. And then as I find extra rhinestones, I can just pick it up, move it over to one of the holes that don't have a rhinestone in it. So I'm going to fast forward through this part. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and pick these up. I have my transfer tape here. It's on a white backing, and you can reuse this until it's not sticky enough to pick up your rhinestones. And I have used this, so hopefully it's still pretty good. I'm just going to hold it. It's about an inch and a half above my rhinestones, and it's slightly curved down, and you just have to put it down and commit. You can't put it down and pick it back up because you're going to mess up your design. Now, if you have some stones that are a little bit out of place, you can still work through this tape to fix that. Like right over here, I can see a little bit of the blue of the mat coming through, so I'm just going to shove that rhinestone over with my fingernail. Then since I've used this before, I'm putting this cover, or actually this is the backing over it, and pushing down pretty hard so that I get good adhesion between the transfer tape and the front of the rhinestones. All right, so let's see if that worked. Okay, I have one that didn't adhere, so I'm just gonna put the transfer tape back down and push down on it. Then I like to just keep pulling mine back and letting it set on its back side. So this is ready to use. Now if I wasn't going to use it immediately, I'd go ahead and put the cover or the backing back on, but I'm going to use this here in just a minute. All right, I've gone ahead and pre-pressed my shirt. It's nice and smooth where my design will be, plus I've removed the moisture. And fortunately, the heat transfer vinyls that I'm using, you can use the same temperature and the same amount of time. The only difference between the two is one says it's a hot or cold peel, and one says it's a cold peel. So, not a problem. And then since all the rhinestones go inside here, I don't have to worry about putting my rhinestones on to see if they're in the right place. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fold this in two and get the center, and then try to have that roughly below the center of the collar. Since it's a v-neck, I don't need to come down three inches. Now, I want to press these at the same time, so I have to make sure that I don't have my vinyl on top of the backing or the carrier sheet. I'll go ahead and find the center again. Okay, so then I'm going to pick this up, make sure it looks fairly straight. I'm going to go over, heat this at 300 degrees for 12 seconds.
All right, since I don't remember which one could be peeled hot or cold and which one had to be cold, I'm just going to let this cool down before I take any of the backing off. All right, let me go ahead and see if this is coming off easily. Okay, that one looks fine. If you go ahead and peel something when it's still hot and it was supposed to be a cold peel, it can stretch and get little ripples in it. It is not attractive. So if it says to wait, you really should wait. Okay, now even though it's not necessary, I really like to put a Teflon sheet over the top of HTV and press it again. And to me, not only do I think maybe it adheres better, but I actually like the impression of the texture of the Teflon sheet in my vinyl. So I'm gonna run over and do that. I'll do it for 10 seconds. Yeah, I think I actually got a little bitty piece of HTV right here, so. Does anyone know how I can get that little fleck of HTV off? If you do, put it in the comment section. Okay, so I'm gonna let this cool off just for about 20 seconds or so, just so that it's cool enough that when I add my rhinestones to it, the glue on the back doesn't start melting or getting soft. All right, so I'm gonna take my time and line this up as well as I can. Okay, I think that's better. Now, if you make your own templates, you wanna make sure that you don't have rhinestones on top of HTV because they are not gonna stick through the wash on that HTV. Now, when I heat this, I'm gonna heat this at 350 for 12 seconds, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover over the Trojan so I don't melt that. Okay, while I was moving this around to get it placed just right, I had two stones that came off. <laughs> I think it's because the transfer tape isn't very sticky anymore. So I'm going to have to place two of those by hand. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, and that looks so good on black. Wow. Okay, I went ahead and put it back under the press because I noticed that some of my stones were just barely touching the vinyl. So I wanted to make sure I had really good pressure and really good heat and really good adhesion. I think they'll be fine because they are really just barely touching it. So let me show you the final product. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. And I think my friend will too. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you do that. Then click the bell and select the all notification. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Also, don't forget, if you know how to get this little bitty piece of HTB off, See how tiny it is, but it's white and it shows up on this black shirt? Then let me know.